Welcome back. It's nice to see you again. Now, whether you're a professional filmmaker and animator, or maybe you're just getting started, today is the episode for you because we're talking about the top 10 reasons why you should be using Apple Motion. And to help me out with that, we've got our good friend here, Dylan Bates, the Final Cut Bro. Now, with that said, let's jump into the reasons why Dylan and I think you should be using Apple Motion. Apple Motion is by far the best tool to use if you are looking to learn how to get into motion graphics, bar none. And the reason for that is if you open any effect or generator or title or transition from Final Cut Pro, in motion, you can actually see how it was made, including the ones that are provided by Apple. And this is just unbelievably useful. If you've got a template you bought from somewhere, or maybe you've got something that Apple provides and you don't like exactly how it performs, you can just open it directly in motion and you can pull it apart, change it, and republish it back to Final Cut Pro. No problem. And when you're getting started, or even if you've been around for a while and you want to get some new tips and tricks but don't have a lot of people to ask directly, this can't be overlooked. Now with that said, let's jump right over to Dylan to hear his opinion on why you should be using Apple Motion. Thank you so much for having me on, Joseph. I'm super excited. One of the reasons that I really love Apple Motion is that it has far superior stabilization tools. In Motion, I have this handheld shot selected, but maybe I want it to be totally locked off. I could select this shot, go up to Behaviors, Motion Tracking, and select Stabilize. Then I'll just click Analyze, and this is gonna go through and analyze the entire scene to find out how it can actually lock it off. So now that it's analyzed, we can play through and you can see how this scene is completely steady. However, you'll notice on the edge, there are these black edges. And I really like this because it gives you more control in how you want this effect to be applied. If you don't like these black edges, you can go on over to your border settings and change it from normal over to zoom. This is going to auto zoom the video so that it completely fills the frame and takes out those black edges. On top of that, you can adjust whether it's just the position, the scale, or the rotation. But one other feature that I really love about the stabilization in motion is we can actually change it to track a specific region. So let's say that I just want to make sure that we have the same motion as the back wall here. I could click analyze and it will track that region throughout the entire video. So you can get very specific with exactly how you want to stabilize your footage using the stabilizer in motion. Another reason that I love Apple Motion is the keyframe editor. Using keyframes in Final Cut Pro can be very rigid and you don't have a ton of flexibility. You can't really add solid bezier curves or anything like that. So if you have any kind of animation that you want to do, I highly recommend that you use motion. So let's say I have this object here and I want it to scale into the frame. I could go into the properties and I could drag the scale down to zero. We'll click add a keyframe, we'll move forward and we'll add another keyframe and just have this go up to a full 100 in scale. So now as it is, it has a linear curve. So if I push play, you'll see the animation just pops in like that. And I might even stretch this out so we can really see the effect you'll see how it's kind of sliding in. And in Final Cut Pro, this is what you would be limited to. However, in Motion, if we click over here on the right, we have the entire keyframe editor. And I'm actually gonna just hide the regular timeline and drag this up a bit. So currently, as it is, it's this linear animation you can see because this line is really straight. But if I wanted to, I can actually change this to a Bezier curve. So I can click and drag and select all my keyframes here. We'll right click, interpolation, and change it to Bezier. So now now I have this kind of S curve shape. If I wanted to change this further, I could click and drag on these handles to get the animation exactly how I want it. So if I play through, you can see how it starts really fast and then slows way down at the very end. So you can get very granular with how you want your animations to play out in motion and it just gives you a ton of control that I really wish Final Cut Pro had and that's one of the reasons that I really, really love Apple Motion. The next reason that I really, really love Apple Motion is the 3D camera implementation. So I have this scene here kind of going through these circular bookcases. Now in Final Cut Pro, I could use scaling features to achieve something similar, but it would be very, very difficult. If I change my view to this split view, we can actually see the camera here on the right side flying through the different objects I've created. And that made it much easier to create this really dynamic looking scene by using a 3D camera. But 
that is not the only thing you can do with the 3D camera in motion. So in tandem with the stabilization features in motion, you can also use the 3D camera to stabilize. So I'll go up to add object and we will just add a camera and I'll switch everything to 3D. We'll jump into the inspector of the camera. We'll go to the properties and find the position parameter. You'll notice if I slide the position parameter on this camera, it's actually moving my video around. So I'll click this down arrow, add a parameter behavior and select track. Now I'll just drag in the video that I want to track and I'll go ahead and turn on detect sources to faces. We'll click and drag our tracker onto my face. Then I'll push analyze. This is going to go through and track the video of my face, but because it's applying it to the 3D camera, it's actually locking the camera onto my face, which can be a really, really fun and dynamic effect for your videos. Now, all I need to do is scale up the video of my face so that we don't get any of those black edges. Then if I play through, we can see how it's just completely locked perfectly onto my face. So this is just another one of many reasons why I absolutely love Apple Motion. Thank you so much, Joseph, for having me on the channel, and I hope you guys have a fantastic day. Number five, low price, no subscription. You already know that that's why you're here is because Apple Motion is just a screaming deal. I've done the math and I've saved myself thousands of dollars by not going for the After Effects subscription. Now I know the initial cost of Final Cut and Motion can feel a little steep, especially when you look at five, six, ten dollars a month for a subscription, especially if you don't know if you're going to be doing this for a while. But trust me, six months of a subscription and you've already paid for Motion and you get to keep it forever. I've had access to every single update that Motion has published for years now. It's without a question one of the best deals I've ever gotten out of a software package. Now that rounds out five of our reasons why we love Apple Motion, but if you wanna see the other five, those are over on Dylan's channel. So make sure you go check that out right now. Link in the description below. Thanks, I hope you found this useful. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe. It helps people discover the channel and our growth is just getting started. Also like and subscribe to Dylan's channel. He's been an immense help to me as a new YouTuber getting started and helping people learn and understand how to use Apple Motion to make their favorite VFX. Thanks and we'll catch you on the next one. See ya.